Hi, this video is going to be about uh, polygenic inheritance, about breeding and selection, and about uh, additive traits. And here is a problem. In a cross involving polygenic inheritance, only 2 out of 125 of the offspring F2 were as extreme as one of the uh, parents. How many gene pairs are involved? And uh, this is not my first video about how to solve uh, such problems. So if you know how to solve this problem, I recommend you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own. And when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So before I will show you how to solve this problem, this is uh, very easy. I want to give you some uh, theory uh, about um, this problem and uh, imagine that we have uh, only one allelic pair and we have uh, two parents and one parent would be of the genotype that is um, capital A capital A another one would be small a small a so this is going to be parent 1 and this is parent 2 and if we build a Punnett square, uh, we would see that all of the F1 generation going to be um, of the same genotype and phenotype. And uh, if we uh, cross this progeny, self-cross them, uh, in the F2 generation, we are going to get uh, different results. So, one parent would be heterozygous and another one also heterozygous. So, this is would be a source of uh, parents for F2 generation and all of them going to be uh, uniform for this uh, locus. And here would be results of such a cross in F2 generation. So here we would have uh, homozygous dominant, heterozygous genotype and homozygous recessive. If we were take, talking about uh, uh, simple Mendelian genetics, this 3 out of 4 would represent one uh, phenotype. And this going to be second uh, phenotype but because here we have uh, additive traits we are going to get different picture let me return to the uh, previous uh, example so imagine that uh, one dominant allele would add uh, for example two inches to the tallness of the plant and uh, each recessive allele would add only one inch so all the uh, all the progeny would be three inches tall and uh, would be uniform. So here we would have also parent one and parent two that is going to be uh, also uniform, but they would produce not uniform uh, progeny. So here we would have uh, 4 inches, 2 out of 4 would be 3 inches, and um, 1 would be 2 inches. So this is going to be uh, the same uh, genotype and phenotype as parent 1 here. And this is going to be another extreme uh, phenotype and genotype as parent 2 here and this is going to be the third uh, phenotype. So as you see in the F2 generation we would have uh, segregation and we would have uh, 1 out of 4 that would be the same phenotype as this parent and 1 out of 4 the same uh, phenotype as this parent. And of course, uh, if we would have two genes and uh, four alleles, uh, we would have much more variance. 
So our table uh, would uh, contain 16 uh, cells and much more variation. So the more genes, the more variation we would have. And uh, now we can return to our problem in order to find how many genes and allelic pairs. So this is going to be uh, one allelic pair, another allelic pair. So how many genes or allelic pairs uh, control the trait. And here would be our uh, formula today. So this is going to be a frequency of the extreme uh, phenotype uh, would equal to one half raised n and uh, raised two. And for the f frequency of the extreme phenotype, we have this number. So we just can use this number. So frequency would be 2 divided by 125. So 2 out of 125 would be of the extreme uh, phenotype, like one of the parents in F uh, in uh, generations that uh, produce uh, F1 generation. So uh, here we would have the same numbers. With our next step, we just can uh, divide 2 by 125 and find the decimal number. And this is going to be 0 0.016. And this is going to equal to, uh, to 1 half raised n and raised 2. And now, uh, in order to get rid of this uh, 2, the square we have to take square root but we have to do it uh, from the both sides so here we would have uh, 0 0.126 um, and here we would have 1 half raised n and now with the next step we just have to find reciprocals of both uh, numbers and what is a reciprocal uh, for example reciprocal of five would be one fifths so uh, or reciprocal of eight would be one eighth uh, in other words we can say that five is a if we use a fraction would be 5 divided by 1 so everything divided by 1 would be the same number and 8 divided by 1 would be 8 so as you see uh, these numbers just like a reflection of each other we just uh, flip uh, over numbers and uh, reciprocal of 5 would be 1 fifths and a reciprocal of one fifths would be five and uh, also we can use uh, decimal numbers for example we can say that reciprocal of five would be 0 0.2 and this is uh, the same numbers as here in this example we are using fractions and in this example we are using decimal numbers but this is the same numbers and also I want to tell you that when we multiply two reciprocals we always would get one and this is the rule and uh, if we want to find reciprocal of this number we just have to divide one by this number and we would find reciprocal so if we divide um, one by 0 0.126 we would find its reciprocal that is going to equal to 7.9 and uh, we can round this number to 8 so this is going to be 8 on the left side and here on the right side reciprocal of 1 half 
one half would be two. So if we multiply these two numbers, we are going to get one. So here on the right we would have two raised n. And uh, this is very easy. So eight would equal to two raised three. So n would equal to three. N would be equal to three. And this is going to be our answer. So this um, trait would be under the control of three genes or three allelic pairs. And we also can say that um, genotypes of the parents were uh, capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B, capital C, capital C for one parent. And we cross it with another genotype that were small a, small a, small b, small b, and small c, small c for the second parent. So uh, in this example, when we had uh, two extreme parents of two extreme uh, phenotypes uh, in diploid organism, we have two alleles for each one. So in F2 generation, as you see, each extreme genotype were one quarter or 25%. And uh, here, two out of uh, 125 were uh, about 1.6%. So we just uh, multiply this number by 100 in order to find um, the percentage form. Or we can move this decimal point two places to the right. So 1.6% uh, represent uh, uh, such situation when uh, the trade under the control of uh, three allelic pairs or three genes. And of course uh, in uh, f one generation, the genotype of the progeny would be uh, capital A, small a, capital B, small b, and capital C, small c. Because this parent only can uh, produce uh, gametes with uh, capital A, capital B, and capital C alleles. And this parent only can produce gametes with small a, small b, and small c um, alleles. So together when they would join they would produce heterozygous genotype for each allelic pair. And in F2 generation of course uh, there would be much more um, different genotypes so this uh, table would be much bigger and as you see this would be much easier to solve using uh, this formula than building a large Punnett square. This would be much faster and this method is much more reliable. There is less uh, probability that you would make uh, a mistake. So I hope now you can solve analogous problems and um, if you have uh, any questions, uh, comments, please uh, write uh, in the comment box. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.